Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In the last video, we made our first steps into data science and explored the John Hopkins University COVID-19 dataset. We went through the basics of Python pandas, learned how to manipulate data frames, and we briefly saw how to visualize the main metrics using Plotly library. Today, we're gonna explore this space and plot some other interesting figures such as the daily cases, mortality ratio, or the cases per 100k population of a country. If you missed the first video, make sure you go through that one first so you can follow along in this one, as we'll be using most of the data frames we built last time. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, this is our Jupyter Notebook, and as part of our requirements, we're gonna install and import few libraries, mainly Pandas and NumPy to manipulate the data frames, Plotly for data visualizations, we're gonna use Plotly Express, Graph Objects and Subplots, and finally, we'll also install requests and beautiful sub4 as we will need it in our last visualization. Then we need to import the confirmed death and recovered data frames. And we'll drop some of the columns we're not gonna be using, such as latitude, longitude, and province. We also saw how some regions had multiple provinces, so we need to make sure we aggregate them by country and just display one row for each. At this point, we have a white data frame with a date column and a unique column for each country. In the next cell, we're gonna melt this white data frame into a long format data frame. Let's execute the cell. See, we went from a data frame of 328 rows and 192 columns to a much narrower and taller data frame. This one only has three columns, but more than 62,000 rows. Cool. Next, we need to ensure the date values are treated as date formats and not strings, so we are just reformatting them a bit in this cell. Once done that, we can compute the maximum date, so the largest date from this dataset, which is today's date. Great! Once done that, we can define the current data frames as in today's numbers. We can create a data frame that only has today's date values, and then compute the total confirmed cases as the sum of this column. That is a total of 72 million confirmed cases. Insane. We'll do the same for the other data frames and compute the active cases as the difference between confirmed, death, and recovered cases. Cool. Now in the last video, we also show those number as plotly indicator graphs. If you want to display these numbers in a different way, say on a map, we could use the Coropleth map graph, okay? Forget about this line for now, it's just an option to ignore a warning for this chart. We're defining a figure of type Coropleth map. We're gonna pass in total confirmed data frame and set a dense color code. Then countries are gonna get colored based on the confirmed measure. Let's show the figure. Nice, we have a geographical map and the data when we hover the countries. Thing is, the color doesn't give much insights as the range of the measure is way too high. We can set a range color from 0 to 10, for instance, but then the map will be mostly black. So we can amend the measure to be the base 10 logarithm of the confirmed cases. Cool. Now let's try to visualize another metric, say the mortality ratio. For this metric, we will need to bring into the same data frame both the confirmed and death cases. Let me define A as a copy of total confirmed data frame. Since these data frames are sorted by country alphabetically, we can directly add a new column. A deaths equals total deaths data frame, the death column. Finally, we can create a new column called A death rate equals deaths divided by confirmed cases multiplied by 100. And then we'll just keep two decimals. Let's show the data frame. Cool. That's the current status for today. Now we can show this data in many ways. For instance, we can create a scatter plot. So let's define a figure equals plot express scatter. We'll pass in A data frame as first argument, X equals confirmed, Y equals deaths, and let's color the graphs by country. Finally, we'll set the size of the scatter dots as death rate. Let's show the figure. Okay, this is not really visual. Let me display less countries. Instead of A, we'll just say A sort values 
by confirmed cases, ascending equals false, and then get the first 20. Let's run it again. Nice, this is a nice chart. We can easily identify US as top countries in terms of confirmed and death cases, but it's not the one that has the most mortality ratio. By looking at the size of the dot or marker, we see that among the top 20 countries by confirmed cases, the one that has larger mortality ratio is Mexico. If we wanted to display the top countries by mortality ratio instead, we could change confirmed to death rate. Now this chart is mostly condensed on the axis origin. We see fewer countries with very large death rate, but with much smaller number of confirmed cases. Cool. Another way of looking at the mortality ratio could be using a mix of bar and line chart. For this one, I'm gonna directly declare B as a copy of A and only display the top 20 countries by death cases. For this figure, we'll use the make subplots object in which we'll declare a secondary Y axis to display the second measure. Then we'll add trace a bar graph object and this object will display country region in the horizontal axis and deaths in the vertical axis. Then we'll set text as B column deaths, name deaths for the legend and text position auto. Let's show the figure. Good, so far so good. Now let's add trace the second object, so the second graph object of type scatter. And we'll copy this and change the metric to death rate, the text as well, and the legend. Finally, we'll set the mode equals markers plus lines. Let's show the figure. Great, we have both graph objects for both metrics, but the death rate is at zero because we're using the same main axis. So let's amend that and set secondary y equals false on the first one and secondary y true on the scatter plot. Let's execute the cell. Great. So again, in this figure, we are plotting the top 20 countries but death cases. And for those, we also display the death rate percentage. Next, we're gonna plot the daily confirmed cases. So we saw how the initial confirmed melt data frame has information on the cumulative confirmed cases. If you want to display the daily cases, we need to compute the daily increment. For this next plot, we're gonna group the confirmed cases by date, so we will be losing the information at the country level. Then we'll create a new column called daily confirmed equals confirmed.diff. The diff function basically computes the difference between one row and the previous one if we don't pass in any arguments. Finally, let's create the figure using plotlexpress.area using C data frame, X equals date, and Y equals daily confirmed. Let's show the figure. Great! So this one shows the worldwide daily cases. We see some periods from March to June where the confirmed cases were constant over time. Then from June to October, the cases doubled. Finally, the so-called third wave happened late October and we are still hitting large numbers. See this spike right there on December 10th? Somehow we managed to double the cases from 7, 800 to 1500 on that day. So don't think this is over yet. Please stay safe and wear a mask. Lastly, we'll explore the confirmed cases per 100k population. As you know, in this dataset, we don't have population data, so we need to import it somehow. I've been searching online and a good resource was worldometers.info. In this site, there's a table with 2020's population and some other statistics, such as the yearly change, the net change, density, land area, etc. So let's scrape this table and import the data in our Jupyter notebook. In the next cell, I'm using requests to get the web page information. Using beautiful soup, we'll get the response HTML content. 
Then we'll get the first table HTML tag. Finally, the entire table can be read using read HTML pandas function. Let's display the data frame. Awesome. Let's now prepare this data frame. To start with, let's rename these two columns, country or dependency to country slash region and population 2020 to just population. Then we'll remove all remaining columns for ease of use. So you can specify all the column names or just doing a uh, columns difference, the ones that are not country slash region or population. Finally, let's replace United States to US to match the value from our COVID dataset. Now, this is the data frame that maps each country with its population. So we will use population DF to compute the cases per 100K population. For this last plot, I'm only gonna compute the cases per 100K for the last 14 days, as this seems to be the new standard in all the COVID-19 analysis. So let's start by creating the date variables. Let's define today as datetime.now and then minus 14 is gonna be today's minus daytime time delta weeks equals two. Now let's also change the format to month, day, year to match the date values from our data frames. If we print out today and minus 14, we get these dates. Right. So now let's define D as a copy of confirmed data frame and then D will be just the rows where D date is greater or equal than minus 14. Cool. Now we want to compute the cases that happen within this period of time. So in short, we want to do as well the difference between this number and this number right there for all the countries. A quick way to do it is to compute the incremental cases as we did in the previous plot. So let's define D daily as D group by country region, confirm column, and compute the difference between a row and its previous row. Let's see the result. Okay, in the first row, we get a not a number. We could count this as zero or increase by one the period of time. So minus 14, minus one. That's really up to you guys. Now I'm gonna drop date and confirm cases columns. And finally, I'm gonna sum all daily cases per country. So group by country region dot sum. And then sort them by daily and in descending order. And that's what we get. So in the last 14 days, these are the numbers of confirmed cases. Now let's bring in the population data. We'll define E as pd.merge. And if you guys are familiar with SQL language, we're gonna perform kind of a left join here. So left equals D, right equals population data frame, left on country region and right on country region as well. Once we have this data in, let's create a new column. For instance, E per 100K equals E daily per 100,000 divided by E population. Let's check the data frame. Cool. Now you can visualize this data in multiple ways as well. We're just gonna plot this per 100k column in a bar chart. So figure equals px bar, E sort values per 100k. We'll get the top 30 countries by this measure where X is country region and Y is per 100k. Let's also add the data text and show the figure. Okay, too many decimals. Let's add a dot round two to keep just two decimals. Good. So in this figure, we see the top 30 countries by confirmed cases per 100K population in the last two weeks. We see Turkey as top country, followed by many Eastern Europe countries, then US, we also have Andorra, Luxembourg in there, and so on. Okay guys, that's it for today. We've extended what we did in the last video. We reviewed the workflow to import and work with the COVID-19 dataset. We use new pandas functions such as diff and merge. We've explored other plotly library visualization types like the choropleth map. 
And finally, we've also explored some other figures such as the mortality ratio and the cases per 100k population. If you are interested in data science, if you want me to dive deeper into this space, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.